Well, what I do for a living for the last 30 years is I've been telling and writing horror stories for a living. So, and I get a lot of people who come up to me and go, but you seem like such a nice lady. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, well, you know, you know. You don't know me that well. <laughs> but, um, but what makes you want to tell these, these horrible stories? These scary stories? I said, well, let me tell you about something that happened to me when I was a child. I grew up in an old house. Uh, it dated back to um, Civil War just after in uh, rural Arkansas and uh, it was a big house not a mansion not a plantation but a good sized house and my bedroom was in that I shared with my younger sister was in the back of the house and it was huge at least you know probably wasn't as huge as I'm remembering it but because I was a lot smaller then but it was a big room, and it had a weird closet that had two doors. One that opened up into the closet, and one in the back of the closet that opened up into my parents' bedroom. Or would have if my father hadn't sealed it shut. So, and on either side of the closet were these weird, deep shelves that had you know, of various different sizes and depths, and all had little tags on them with little, that had been glued on to the shelves with faded handwriting that was from a different era, very florid and very cramped, and very faded. And at that time, I could not read. At least I couldn't read cursive. So there were just these weird you know, things that I stuck my shoes and my toys in, these dove, dove cots or whatever. Well, one night, my bed, my bed was up against the wall, up against the window that when I laid on my bed, I could look out at this big old pecan tree in the backyard. And during the winter, when all the leaves came off, the leaves, you know, the, the branches and the limbs would form weird images that I would put together like a little puzzle like, you know, like, like in the back of child craft or can you spot all the Indians and I was seeing all kinds of weird stuff in the trees because apparently I was creative and one night and my baby sister Margaret who was a year and a half younger than me was on the other side of the bedroom and one night it was and I remember this distinctly, it was New Year's Eve because my, grand, my parents left to go to a party and my grandmother Willoughby was watching us. And, and she put us to bed around nine o'clock because I was about five and she was not going to be dealing with any kids staying up to watch New Year's. So she put us to bed around nine and I'm laying in bed thinking, I'm going to stay up to midnight and see the New Year. Because in some mind, I thought I would actually see it come trotting across the sky, you know, like, like a baby or something, because you're a kid and you're stupid. And I'm laying in bed, in the dark, looking out, staring up at the things in the trees. And, I, and the door to my closet opens. And something comes out. It doesn't walk out. I wouldn't call it walking out, it just kind of emerges out. Kind of tall, you know, kind of white. And it goes straight over to my bed and does this. Looks straight down at me. And all I see eyes. No, no mouth, no top of the head, just eyes. And it's all white except for the eyes. And it just looks down at me. 
and gets up and turns around and just kind of doesn't walk, but it goes back into the closet and the door closes. And I lay there for a while <laughs> until my grandmother came in and I said, did you just come in? And she goes, no, honey, no, no, something, I, a, a monkey came out. Because in my mind, I thought I saw a monkey. I don't know why I thought I saw a monkey. Just because. And she goes, oh, no, honey, that was just the doctor. And I didn't know until about that time that the house that I lived in used to be a medical center that the doctor, it was also the doctor's home. My bedroom used to be the TV clinic. And the doctor died in that house during the Spanish influenza, taking care of people in the house. So when people ask me, why do you write these weird stuff? I said, you know, well, then I tell them that story and they go, okay. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Gordon.